This episode may contain strong language and adult themes. Viewer and listener discretion is advised. Hello, good evening, and welcome to Julian's Living Room, where tonight we see a very pale shade of brown adorning the sofa with no colourful cushions. But that's offset by the beautiful coastal watercolour hanging on the wall. Or you could just look at us. (laughs) (laughs) You're right, mate. I'm cooking dinner, my pasta's on, it's going to boil over if I stay here. What the fuck are you doing the colour for? <laughs> you can do that. You can watch this in a minute. Evening all. <laughs> Evening. Cheers. Uh, yeah, mate, cheers. Right, now I have to sort my pasta out. It's water, not gin, by the way. It is water, not gin. Um, Sam? Yes? On the scale of 1 to 10, how happy are you this week? Eh, personally, very happy. Um, Scotland won, so a bit happier, yeah. <laughs> well, that's a typical jock happy, because you really didn't look happy one little bit there. Yeah, so, I mean, that's a, that's the third, third time on the trot they've been in Australia, so, you know, it's, uh, it's, not, it's not a bad way. They, they, they're, they're learning how to grind out results, aren't they, so... You know? Yeah, do you know, I saw a little bit of it yesterday, uh, flitting with, with other things that were going on, and I watched it today. Um, I, it wasn't a terribly good or exciting game from anybody, was it? No, I mean, I, I said that when I was sitting watching it. I was like, you know, it's, it's kind of, you know, the all outstanding game, but, you know, there was a lot of kicking and that involved in it. But, you know, a win's a win at that level, isn't it? You get the W, that's what matters, isn't it? That's exactly, that's all that matters. I, I mean, when, when I look at that and I see some of the stats that um, Australia had only gone over six phases once in the game and when they hit the f- seventh phase, I think they turned the ball over. Mm. Um, but the, the possession was being kicked away way too early, I thought, all through the game. Yeah. Yeah, it was like that a lot in the first half. I mean, no, sorry, in the second half. Second half was like that. Yeah, uh, uh, well, there was, a, there was a few comments to the referee who I thought for his very last international handled those blokes better than he's ever handled a game before. You could tell he just was enjoying himself and didn't care what people said. Oh, absolutely. He was giving high fives and everything, wasn't he? He had a cracking game, I thought. I was like, you know what? When he was, when he was refereeing, fine, and I, I said to my mate, like, I was like, do you think this is his last game or something like that? And then the commentator said, this is his last game. I was like, oh, no, but he won that. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, not good on him. He's, he's had a good <laughs> career, hasn't he? So, he had a good game. He had a cracking game, I thought. Uh, do you know what? If only he <coughs> read like that right from the start um, yeah. of his career. But, yeah, I did like that high five when the assistant referee put the arm out the wrong way for the line out. And, yeah, and he yeah, corrected yeah, him right. on the radio and then walks up and gives him a high five. <laughs> yeah, good smile, yeah. He, he gave do- it somebody else. He gave the, a player a high five as well. Did he really? I, I, I yeah, saw him kept putting his um, his arm round um, round Michael. And who's the who, who's the uh, Australian with like the typical? Well, I say typical Australian. Why do they all have these great big bushy moustaches? It's like it's, it's, it's like a it's, national it's, costume. It's, well, the, it's probably is a national costume, but it is November. It's just there was a scrum half the number nine. It was, but I can't remember his name. Yeah, I think I think it was a scrum half actually that, uh, that he actually high fived when he was leaving the pitch. Oh, it was cracking though, wasn't it? Because yeah. he was always on it. And I tell you what, though, yeah, I, I, and I don't know whether it's just because the microphone was a bit more sensitive or whatever, but the amount of appealing throughout that entire game was doing my head in. <laughs> Every single, and and I think probably. It, on balance, I think Scotland were worse at it than Australia, but they were just shouting for everything. Scotland forwards particularly, but mm. the, I think the Australian backs made up for it. They wanted every decision. And the great thing was he just wasn't listening. Yeah. I do worry a little bit, though, about 
Um, imagine, imagine that Scotland team without Hog or Russell. Well, listen, mate, they, 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 I know that Tonga weren't up to match, but listen, they didn't have fun, Finn Russell and uh, Hoggy against Tonga, and they smashed Tonga, so, you know? Yeah, but, but Castle under 12s would smash Tonga. No, I don't agree with that, mate. I don't agree with that at all. What was the score? Oh, they run around them anyway. What did, what did England put past Tonga? Oh, I don't know. It's one of those things you don't bother watching twice, mate. Well, I think it was 60 odd points as well, wasn't it? Honestly, can't and remember. Had, and they had their top boys there. What, what happened to Owen Farrell anyway? Did he not play? Farrell, no. He's got Kobe. Oh. He's got Kobe. Oh, yeah. He's got the big C. He's, no, he's not got the big C. He's got the little C. Yeah. But he, he's, 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 he's got, he's got, um, he's got COVID, is he? Owen Farrell. Yeah. I wonder who did the test kit. Marcus Smith probably pissed on it. <laughs> yeah, okay. it was Marcus Smith that actually did the test to see if it was coming out positive or not. Just put vinegar on it, it always makes them go positive. Um, I, interestingly, though, I did look at, because for, for many years, um, certainly under Vern Cotter, um, most of the Scottish team seemed to be playing everywhere but Scotland. Um, and interestingly, I know the two people I've just singled out, so <laughs> Finn Russell... That's oh, it was. True. They that's always. Well, true. That's why if they if they had a majority Scottish bias, you you kept losing. But yeah, Russell, I know, plays it. at Racing. Hoggy's down at Exeter. But actually, mate, yeah. fourteen of that starting twenty three play in Scotland, either for Glasgow yeah. or or for yeah. Edinburgh, because there's no other teams yeah. in Scotland, obviously. Yeah. Which yeah, actually really. sounds quite bright for Scottish rugby domestically. Yeah, it's. I mean, they the, they went through a lot of the phases, phase time and. You know where they had a lot of imports, if you like. You know, because Scotland were the worst for it at one stage in, in, internationally. That you know they had the most imports. Uh, well, yeah, but, I mean, the commentators did make much of the fact that he's qualified because his granny, sister's brother's cousin's pet dog yeah. once had a walk in Edinburgh Park. Once got a ski from a dog bowl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, well, once had a dram of whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but no, um, I, I thought it was a good game. Uh, so I, I think we should turn our attentions to the slightly closer game. Uh, it, it, uh, the Arms Park, the Principality, the Millennium, whatever it's called this week. Um, and we did, and I, forgive my naivety, I did have to ask on the group why the roof wasn't, open, wasn't closed and everybody was getting bloody wet. And the reason, Julian, is? The South African said no, because they wanted it open. So did they get it? I thought it was because Mark Drayford said, if you have it closed, you can only have a third capacity because of COVID. No, South Africa said that they, want, they wanted it open. So. South Africa wanted it open anyway. Yeah. But why? It's Wales. Wales are always playing in the wet. Uh, yeah, but Wales want to play that running game and throw the ball around a lot. And the South Africans want to push it up the middle. So... Yeah, there wasn't much throwing it around. Uh, in fact, the only time that they threw it around was when they were trying to dodge um, a, a pitch invader. I mean, that was the one time we actually ran the bloody ball, to be honest. And then it was the one time. <laughs> it, it was. Uh, there were, again, it just it just didn't seem to be patterns, phases. Like, they're all... I mean, the first three minutes of the Scotland game, it was like it was like watching in the 14s. They were going all left, right and centre, kicking the ball, yeah. running well, it, chipping it back. Nice to watch. It was a good game of rugby. They weren't really hitting it up hard. It was, yeah, it was big tackles going in, big hits, cracking defences all the way through the game, start to finish. And then at the end, we just fell off in South Africa. Yeah. Yeah. Still, had, still had some gas in the tank. And that the, was pen, the, pen, the penalty game. against the penalty count against South Africa was massive to start with, and then it turned around the other way, whereas Wales were giving a lot of them away. And, uh, and then when they switched their front row off, they took the whole front row off and put a new one on. That was it. They always do. They always do. Yeah. And four of them were in the second half, and they all ended in penalties. Yeah. Good evening, Peter. Boys, how are you? Hey. 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 You, all right, mate? you guys all right? Yeah, yeah we're good, mate. How good are you? Fucking oh, nice. Absolutely nice. ages. I know, I've had nothing. I mean, that busy, Julian, I can't even cock a ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But got, um, wait, hold on. But you've got enough time to get yellow card in the match, though, haven't you? No, yeah. wanker. 
Yeah, so um, look, I mean, we, we, we're talking just, we'll come on to that in a minute because, Julian, I mean, you say that um, Wales ran out of steam a bit towards the end. And rather than the, the general manager of the Principality Stadium banning um, said young man for life for running onto the pitch, I think they should have just given him a pair of fucking shorts and asked him to play. <laughs> no. No, he, um, you see what happened to him afterwards with all the beer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but what, what gets me is, as Welsh fans, so the, the WRU has now launched an inquiry uh, about it because apparently he's a, a member of a, a rugby club in Caerphilly, I think. Yeah. Um, his his missus has been getting death threats on, on Facebook and well, social media. For him, not for her. Uh, well, they have a, a few. A few very nice people did say that they were going to do some rather nasty things to his children, which is a bit off limits. So, for those <laughs> idiots, you can stop right now. Um, and there's no. They have been getting death threats, and uh, that's out of order. He did something stupid. He's an idiot. He's going to pay for it, but via the proper channels. But I did. Yeah. Warn you, I, did I did tell you. I did tell you. I did put up a chat. I bet yeah. you. If you happen to get me, starts getting death threats. Oh yeah, oh, with, without a shadow of a doubt. And and you know, <laughs> the, what what gets me is the fact that it was so pre-planned for a twenty-pound dare that his mate who dared him is walking down the steps behind him, filming him. He's probably now, you get don't him. you don't do it when yeah. I, and I, apparently <laughs> fine now. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, apparently the, the, the dare was to do it at a certain minute. But, you yeah, know, exactly. if you're a real Welsh fan, you'd have waited for the play to be up the other end of the field, wouldn't you? Yeah. 70th minute they charged, they did, they bet him. And he did it. But, dickhead. Yeah, I, I, and I, hopefully his mates are paying the fine now. I actually don't think he realised where the play was because he was looking backwards and the crowd yeah. went on. He had no idea where the play was. Not a clue. It's not like the old days with streakers, is it? No, no he didn't even get his knob out. He's not like Pete. <laughs> <laughs> is that why you got yellow carded recently, Pete? Because you, you got your knob out? Uh, no, it hit a player in the face. What, with your knob? Well, you know. No, with his Rolex. Rolex. Junior's no, trying to leave. With his Rolex. With his Rolex. <laughs> Now, interestingly, there are a few other rumours. So we, we, we've had, <laughs> I think Johnny's just been sick in his mouth. Um, a few other rumours and that, that, are, that have come out. I don't know whether you've seen uh, in the papers over the last week or so. Um, but uh, Harley Quinn's um, team manager. We don't read the newspapers from the UK. <laughs> it's only okay. there. Okay. can't read. Okay. If you've read the internet, then it's on Google, mate. It's on Google. So if you've read Google, um, uh, and anything about uh, Quinns, which popped up uh, last week, I think, or the week before, that the the, um, the long-serving team manager Graham Bowerbank left with um, uh, with with quite a sharp uh, exit uh, a couple of weeks back, um, and nobody was saying anything. But, all lips have been very, very tight. But allegedly, I'll say this again, allegedly it involves some financial impropriety of the uh, of the company credit card. But that's not that's not the best rumour. The, the best one uh, that I've heard this week is the reason that Chris Ashton has not been playing for Worcester uh, over the last few weeks is because after a game, he and Jonathan Thomas had a scrap in the tunnel. At Warriors <laughs> and um, uh, Thomas has dropped him since then. Um, again, it's only a rumor. It's only allegedly happened, uh, but that could be a reason why Chris hasn't been playing. So you know, I, I suppose smacking your boss in the face. No, well, I suppose hitting your boss in the face really doesn't help your career prospects, does it? No. I don't know, Pete. What do you think? You must have done that before. Um, yeah, and then I took his job. Um, <laughs> the, he, uh, yeah, but the other thing is, didn't Ashton get voted like the worst ever player or something? Didn't I read somewhere like like the most overrated player was him and George North? Ah, you've been reading the most overrated players of 2021 that was uh, that was published earlier in the week, which and we were going to talk about, but there's much more fun things to talk about today. Uh, we might come on to that later if we run out of uh, run out of material, but we're going to take a quick break uh, right now, and we'll be back with you right after this.
Hi, I'm Tom Vondell, former England 15s and 7s player. In 2022, I'll be supporting the first ever Samburu 7s rugby tournament in Kenya. Teams from all over the world will be coming together for the safari and rugby in the plains of the Wildlife Reserve. There are three categories of competition for both men and women. Register your interest now at www.samburu7s.com and come join us on this amazing new event. Welcome back to tonight's 22 Dropouts. It's been an eventful weekend of internationals. We're not even going to bother talking about the England-Tonga game. Um, we'll, uh, in fact, every time... And then, although, we no, we will. We will we'll mention one thing, that there was an agreement. We spoke last week uh, on the show about um, the disparity in the pay structure and everything else with uh, between Tonga rugby and England rugby. Um, and they did come up with an agreement uh, of, I think, six figures, they said. That's as, that's as much as they would say as to how much they were going to give Tonga. Um, now, guys, I don't know whether you um, had a catch up on the BT Sport website. Um, just looking at some of the, uh, uh, the highlights uh, as it was this morning. And there's a lovely little intro to their, their written piece that says, um, as the Autumn Nations series continues on Amazon Prime, all eyes were on the Gallagher Premiership. Um, no, they weren't, which is why, BT Sport, you didn't show any of the games on Saturday, simply because you knew you'd get no fucking audience. So all the eyes were not on the Gallagher Premiership. There was 82,000 eyes, or pairs of eyes, all at Twickenham, and then the ones at the Principality and the ones at Murrayfield. And, uh, but, Sam, didn't Murrayfield look a bit empty? No, it was full. Was it? Yeah, it was a sort of stadium for the Dragon. Uh, well, full me, week, because it... It was the week before the Tonga, the Tonga game. Uh, was it? Was it? Yeah. It just... It, I was watching it again today. It just looked like blocks were, were, were quite sparse in some areas. No, as far as I know, it was full. full oh, no, I hope so. I do hope so. Yeah. Um, so um, and they were all wearing blue, and you didn't notice. Did your eyes? Ah, that'll them? be it. Yeah, yeah, that'll be it. So, yeah, um, Sammy, um, have you have you recovered from your 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 trip to Slovenia? I have, yes, and it was uh, a good weekend of rugby here in Malta, and um, with the uh, Blues versus Reds, which is basically like a a, a national training camp game. Um, for selection for this weekend because we've got Malta versus Israel like, this weekend. Uh, at, home. at home. Yeah, at home. Um, so I refereed my first 80 minute match, and I think it's about 18 months. So I was quite chuffed. Nice. Half time huh? score was 5 19, and it finished off 10 points to 50. I, um, I, because it's a non-league weekend uh, here this weekend, uh, weekend just gone. Um, and we'd only got two in the north that were postponed from COVID. So I ended up going to the lovely um, part of the Peak District in Buxton, uh, which has the aptly named Sunny Fields as the ground. Um, and of course, a 14% chance of rain. I did my homework, I checked. Three underlayers later, and my shirt, and I was still at absolutely frozen from the icy force eight drizzle that went horizontal down the pitch in the first half thanks buxton weather it's the only place in the world where you can have four seasons on one game sounds like it was very very moist moist is a nice word isn't it you won't be moist this week because you're going to sunny places I am going to sunny places I'm going down to Portugal for the under 20s uh, European championships and I will be doing a match commissioner course down there with World Rugby. Hey, so, and so the, the under-20s is your practical side? Yes. So we arrive, we observe on Wednesday, we have two days of classroom stuff and work, and then on the Saturday we'll be helping out, I think. I'm not sure yet. I'll find out when I get there. Brilliant. It's not bad, is it? Good, Wait, good so when, when are you going to do yours then, Sammy? Do what? Your match commissioner course. Uh, not that you need a holiday in the sun, do you? I did, I've done the online prep stuff and I've been for it, but I haven't done, actually done the match commissioner side of it now. Next one, mate. Next one today. There's a good team of people going down as well. A lot of people I know as well. A lot of friends I haven't seen for a long time. Yeah. So, um, it's a good crowd. 
Got, Did you play well, I'm the weekend, up. Pete? I'm and wearing enough flats at the moment. Running. Paolo's in charge of things down there. No, we, um, it was non, non-league weekend, but we were supposed to play against Middlesbrough. Um, but somebody let slip our team sheet to Middlesbrough and they cancelled. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a few ringers in there, bud? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, we had a squad of 23 for a 13 fixture. <laughs> yeah. Middlesbrough just and, went, nah, we're not playing. And how, how many players from National 1 and National 2? Uh, no, there was a lot of from um, uh, DN1 playing seven levels above, uh, below where they were supposed to be playing. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we had, uh, yeah, we had a fair few. So what did you do instead then? Just sit, uh, sit in the pub and watch the games? Uh, do you know something? I had a Saturday afternoon where I absolutely chilled out and I watched the Rugby on One channel and on the other TV I watched uh, the cricket. So I had a real nice... And then, the, and then on night, then on the night I thought it would be a nice easy night on, on the Saturday night and my resident wanted fresh fruit and I... It got busier and busier in the pub, and all my staff wanted to go because I said I'll cover them. Because so one of my resi said, "Oh, I want yeah, I want fresh fruit in the morning." So I had to go down to the shop. When I went down to the shop, I visited about four pubs on the way back. <laughs> <laughs> so none of your staff had a night off, early go then that night. I came back at quarter to eight. We finished at eight o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. I absolutely love that, mate. Oh, dear. Uh, um, they're all probably going worst boss ever. <laughs> what did, do, yeah, obviously, you're going to Portugal this week. Uh, what did you do at the weekend, Jules? This weekend, watched a bit of rugby. Um, my kids had some fun at the football. And, um, yeah, watched a bit of rugby. That was it. I watched the game on Friday night, the USA-Canada. Well, Saturday morning, should I say? It was like one AM or two AM. I didn't. To be honest, mate, I didn't know they were playing. What, what's this for? Is it a friendly or a repechage or no? Probably. The women were playing. Women in the Pacific. What was it? The Pacific uh, Four Nations, whatever it is tournament. Yes. Yeah. So they, um, the women that, played. Okay. Yes, they played that Canada. was And Cat Cat Rush was refereeing. Rush. Yeah, I heard Cat Rush was refereeing. Yeah. So yeah, she had a game. I was chatting to her before the game and after it, and uh, she had a fantastic game. She was really happy about it. Uh, do you know, the, do you know, I was chatting to her on social uh, on uh, WhatsApp earlier this week, um, and she, the, the thing she was most happy about was that she didn't fall over. <laughs> he's been posting these videos on YouTube, on it's, 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 it's Instagram all week, with all of her cock-ups over the years, where she's been bumped into players, ran into people, they throw the ball at her. All sorts of stuffs happened over the years. And she put them all up on 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 the Instagram, and then to come to the game match, she was like, "Maybe I shouldn't have done that. I might have jinxed it." Cracking game in the middle, really good job. And then good. Um, good. Saturday, got was, Saturday was the um, it was the turn of uh, some of the ladies to play as well. I think on oh, no, Sunday, Sunday all the women's team played. Yeah, now there was some there was some other rugby Europe stuff going on as well over the weekend, wasn't there? But it all had been it had been sort of pushed in the background because of the um, the autumn series. I mean, the under twenty started on Saturday, and there was games on Sunday. So Germany played Russia, I think, on Sunday, and there was other other games on Saturday. Spain played. Um, who did Spain play? Fiji, I think. Something like that, anyway. So really? there's a few. Yes, yeah, some of the autumn international games were some of the lower tier nations in or the rugby Europe championship teams against uh, against some of the uh, tier two nations. So that was good to see. Uh, yeah, and, and wouldn't it be great if they had some decent airtime then, rather than just watch it on YouTube? They're all they're all pushed on rugby Europe TV every every yeah. game. Yeah, um, and I think the, the some of those games are actually on Amazon. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I noticed there were a few things coming up uh, on Amazon as well. That, that's that's great as well. But wouldn't yeah. it be good if some of these um, these shows that, that we have, like the BT, you know, the, this highlights things, wouldn't it be great if BT Sports, Sky Sports did did some highlights from those sorts of things, and it would it would start generating much more interest around the wider public to hey, I might have a look at that. Yeah, it might in the UK anyway. I'm pretty sure most of Europe. Oh yeah. Totally 
<laughs> and, you know, across mainland Europe, it is going to be probably one of the biggest draws Most for true. rugby fans. And um, most of but, the mainland Europe guys in the smaller nations watch all their games online anyway. We don't so it's a, it, is TV rugby just sort of as in mainstream TV, paper, paid TV? Is that not a real thing for rugby in, in mainland Europe? Then? No, it's all streamed. Um, if you look at the games here in Sweden, we, do, we did get the Autumn Nations games online uh, on, uh, on one of the main streaming services. So via play, similar to Netflix, Swedish Netflix as such. It was on that live. So you have to pay for the sports channels, same as you would with Sky Sports, and then you get it on your TV at home. Uh, yeah, but, uh, there, and they usually they usually put Swedish commentary on it, which is bloody annoying sometimes. But it's good that they do it because the Swedish yeah. commentators tend to explain the laws over and over and over again to get the regular Swedish public who wouldn't normally watch rugby who might just click on it and say, "What's this?" So they understand the game. And then that's all good. Of though. Go, all of us who watch the game normally are going, "Oh God, no, this is terrible!" But it's not. It's actually quite good for the uh, for the newbies to encourage people to come and have a look at the sport. Yeah, I watched uh, England Tonga without any uh, commentary. I couldn't, I couldn't get to work. Yeah, at you were saying that yesterday on on Saturday, and uh, yeah. and I was like, "What are you talking about?" There's plenty of co- even I got the commentary on here. No, wouldn't let me. To be fair, to be fair, it was Gabby Ogreff, so it was fine. It was all fine. The uh, uh, put on a put on a record score on the Black Ferns again. It's the first time they've ever, it's the biggest loss of Blackbirds have ever had. Yeah. What um, was the score? 54. 50 56, 56, 56, 56, 56, 56, 56, 56, 56, 56, 56, 56, 56, 56, 56, 56, 56, 56, 56, 56, 56, 56, 56, 56, 56, 56, 56, 56, 56, 56, 56, be quite yeah. happy though that the, 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 the England Tonga game didn't have any commentary. At least they would have been biased. <laughs> <laughs> well, you talk about commentary uh, and, and things. It, it, you know, last week I, I uh, you know doffed my cap at uh, Thomas Shanklin for for his co-coms, but I was actually catching up um, l- late last week on that uh, on that game where Gopeth got knocked out, the Wasps game. Um, I think it was against Bath, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, because the kit man got um, got sent off as well. And um, it, it, actually, on BT Sport, it was doing the um, uh, d- doing the comms all on his own, uh, which is the first time I've ever heard him do comms on his own. He's normally the co-coms, uh, but he was doing it in a very conversational style, like you were sat next to him and he was having a chat in the pub with all his mates. And some of the little one-liners he was coming out with about mm, you don't get front row, you didn't get front rows built like that in my day. You know, little things like that. They were absolute pearlers. So, um, you know, I, I, I shall doff my cap and tug my forelock. It's all comms now. I, I was watching the Wales game, the Wales and South Africa game. I think they could have turned the commentators off and we could have just listened to Paul Williams, a referee, all game. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic all match. Talking constantly with the referees. Every time the box gets coming, he was warning them to get ready for it. Every time something was going on, every law thing that was not exactly clear to the players of why it happened, he went through, he knew the law straight off. He had it all, everything. I thought he was absolutely amazing on the pitch. Gotta be gotta be a good tender. World Cup's coming up soon. It's got to be one. It's got to be one of them. Well, talking talking talk World Cup, I, I hear a certain the husband of Polly needs to get his fitness back in order because he didn't <laughs> think he was going. But I've, I, one of the things I heard since last week's show uh, was that uh, his name is not just on the list; it's written in stone. Uh, I list, list, Barney Rubble has gone out with a with a chisel and a and a hammer and and um, put put his name down. So far from sitting back on 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 his laurels for the last sort of two two years, he's now going to have to start working hard again because he has got so laid back over the last couple of years. I'm just all that. Who's this? Just, just being chilled out and, and venerable, I think. Nothing to do with fits. Chilled out and venerable. That's a good place to take a break. We'll see you in a minute. When you need clear and concise match official communication systems, look no further than the brand new Axiwe AT350. Radios are always that they're always useful, they always help us, especially the Axiwe's where all three of us can be open at any time, we can have open communication. Available now from refcomsglobal.net. Invest in profits, 
into match official development worldwide. So we seem to have um, got rid of all the people who can't chat decent about rugby. Uh, I'm not allowed to leave because that's that sort of features me. But at least we've still got Jules here who does know far too much about rugby. Far, far too much. But um, as, as BT Sport said, all lives were on the premiership and we know that they worked because they were all on the telly box watching Amazon over the weekend. And just a few things from uh, from the Prem that, uh, that caught my eye this week. Um, Leicester against Bath, top versus bottom. Both are now eight from eight. Leicester are eight wins from eight and Bath are eight losses from eight. Yeah. Um, well, at least they're, at least are both consistent, mate. Well, Bath are playing Gloucester, aren't they? Or oh, have they played them already? I can't remember. Oh, I don't hmm. know. they got it coming up next, I think. So it's Bath Gloucester's next up. And uh, two of my mates are coming with us to do, who will be in Dubai with us. Um, one's a Bath supporter, one's a Gloucester supporter. So uh, this could be a very entertaining trip for me. It could be a very entertaining trip. In fact, it will be a very entertaining trip for many other reasons and not just because two friends support Gloucester and, um, and Bath. Um, I don't know whether you saw Sunday's live game, the Wasps Quins. I've no idea what happened there. 16 nil up. Uh, I go into half time, come back out, and it's like they'd swap shirts. Wasps couldn't play a damn thing. Um, I, they, they dropping balls, knocking them on, moving them left, right. It, I don't know what happened. And the tackling, again, I mean, we know that tackling is not exactly Jacob Umaga's strong point. Um, and <laughs> there's a lot of people where I was questioning why he's ever picked. And then just as we're just talking about that, of course, he makes that break down the left hand wing almost gets tackled and dances down the uh, by the touchline uh, and Wasps nearly score, nearly been the operative word. Um, so that's why we, we know he's in, in there for, for that sort of skill and his kicking skills, but somebody's got to teach that man how to tackle. You, I can name a few players you could say. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Wasps, well, to be fair, like. Wasps have got 18 players unavailable. They bought, have they got three or four in on temporary loan? There's half of the championship playing for Wasps at the moment. It's English, I don't care. <laughs> but uh, for the second second week running, Wasps have had a player knocked out and carried off on the stretcher. Uh, this time, no foul play, uh, I don't think. I think uh, Crossdale just got his head on the wrong side. Um, and um, uh, fell, fell worse than, uh, than anybody else. Uh, not good for him, obviously, not good for anybody, but um, if Wasps can get their, their guys fit again uh, and get in the back arm, maybe the second half of the season won't be too bad if they can, if they can survive sort of mid-table. It, it, it could be worse. They could be Bath. It could be worse. They could be Bath. You're absolutely right. Um, Interesting game down, down at Saris, wasn't it? I don't know if you saw that. 34 all draw with London Irish. Um, Coleman, Coleman uh, for London Irish uh, went off on, I think it was 22 minutes, he got red carded. Uh, shoulder to the head. Why? The, the guy with the ball is, is dipped about two or three inches. Why do players constantly keep trying to tackle high up? I know you want to smother the ball, but really, how many of those come off these days? How many do you win and how many red cards do you get? Look at the Wales game for that. There's, you look at, the, what was it, Thomas Williams goes up and tries to tackle Khaleesi, who is a unit. And, yeah. he, literally, and he when he actually went for the, for the ball and went to hit high, he actually jumped off the ground. So both his feet were off the ground. Dave as Flanders. he's run into it, one of the top flankers on the planet. Who's going at full pace? There was only with one his feet on the ground, happen. and that was number nine was going to go like a pinball flying off in that direction. <laughs> that's, that's exactly what happened. It was bloody hilarious. Even I laughed. And I'm a Welsh fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like look, even Superman can't run with his knees together. Tackle them low. No, no. it was. Uh, it's just chop legs. No, it's crazy. But, you know, I, I don't know how, how Irish did that on the, because it was a great comeback. I mean, there were 20, there were 27-3 down at one point, Irish. Um, 
the um, uh, Sarri scored another converted try, made it uh, 34. Um, and then with, I think, 62, 60, 60, 62 minutes ago, it was 34-8. And they came back with 14 men to, to draw the game. I don't know what Sarri's did, but they, they took their foot off the gas faster than Wasps did at the weekend. <laughs> which, uh, um, I don't want to put you all in that category, but there you go. Um, Sale, bit pretty uneventful, 30-6 to six against Saints. I don't know what happened to Saints, but they just couldn't couldn't tackle anything. They were awful. I don't know what's going on at the moment. You, I mean, is this a, is this a is this because we got you know they've got so many players away with um, uh, international duties or, or what do you think their, it is? I think they've got all their leaders away with international duties. It's not the numbers more than anything. All the players who are decision makers and so on, they're all away. It's the same with a lot of the other teams as well. Um, well, that's just the point, isn't it? So once they get subbed off, that you get one maybe one or two guys left who've got a bit of experience. Who are usually a little bit older once they get subbed off because they're tired and they've got to look after their bodies a bit better, and you lose all your leaders on the pitch. That could be explaining what happened to Saracens, it could explain Saints and so on. And yeah, that happens I, a lot I, on international weekends that teams will fade in the last few minutes and it won't be fitness levels, it'll be organization. And, and this is one of the, the ironies, isn't it? That if you're top flight in, in, in a domestic competition in any country. Um, the chances are that you're going to have more international players than the ones that are at the bottom of the leagues. Um, so all your stars go off. And is there a bit of a, a Boris Johnson levelling up going on there? Or do they know that those bottom ones, have it, do they leapfrog and have a good chance at, at them? Um, and I suppose that's, that's part, of, part of the joy of the game, is that they, these teams can come back, get, a, get, a, get their tails high and maybe ride a wave. Or you do what you do in all the other leagues, and that's don't play those weekends because all your players are away and everyone gets breaks. Well, that again, again, it's it, that's one of those debates. I mean, I know you've got the short players coming back the week after stronger, and a couple of those leaders who come back from the international games still on a break. Those guys, because they'll still have a rest week, then they can at least be with the team at training and go through stuff with them and, and help pick in those. Uh, maybe play ten minutes at the end. Just to get so, to how does that work in Sweden then? Because your shit season is really short, isn't it? Uh, our season starts in April. Then, I mean, they're working the season out for next year. They redo it every year. So we oh, do they? Well, could, based yeah. on global warming, um, not quite, but uh, based on what the teams want to do with the season and oh, how really? many games they want to play and how will they want to do it. So right now they're looking at a top top series of four teams. Uh, they had a big conference with all the clubs and, and uh, everything. Yes, it was a Swedish club development conference at the weekend, wasn't it? It was, yeah. So they get all the clubs together in Stockholm at this big, at the, uh, the Riksidrottsförbundet uh, athletic uh, site, which is the National Sports Council. Um, they've got this big area at Bolstern in Stockholm where they've got uh, masses of pitches, athletics equipment, training gear, measuring gear. They've got all the breathing apparatus for measuring lung capacity. They've got sprint arenas with timings on them. They've got a massive gym session set up there. They've got classrooms, conference rooms, big canteens. So they have all the youth teams go up there, senior teams, everything goes up there. Elite athletes all the way down to beginners all the time. Do, do you go there? Is, uh, do you we go there or do the referees go? We use it for running courses, usually level two courses and above because it's, it's easier. The level one course, we want to be on a pitch. We'll go to a club and do that. But if we've got level two where you need a bit of classroom time often, and we usually bring in people from overseas as well for level two courses. So do, do you, as referees then, do you get involved in that club conference at all? Send anybody along to that. It was um, apparently they got a lot of work done. A lot of the guys I do development work with, the coach development, and club development, that sort of stuff. They were all there explaining the regional plans and how the regions are doing in Sweden. And then we had uh, Jose, I'm not going to try and pronounce his surname again. I'll see him this week in, uh, in Portugal from Spain, who's uh, d works for Rugby Europe and World Rugby. I stitched, him, I stitched him up at the conference. I sent a message to Jennifer, who was sitting there, getting bored, sending me texts, going, I'm bored out of my mind. There's nothing but 55-plus-year-old men here and five women. That's it. And I was laughing my ass off, going, tell Jose to try juggling with balls while singing opera. <laughs> and he messaged me back, going, you bastard, I'll have you next week. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. I'm looking forward to Jose's Revenge. In fact, I think it could be a whole new series on Twitter that could. Jose's Revenge. It's not as good as Dana's Revenge, however. 
No, okay. Well, things like that should definitely stay where they where they were. But no, that one was actually extremely entertaining. When I was doing my World Rugby Trainer training over in Dublin, we were just outside Dublin for that. Uh, this beautiful centre set up by the uh, hotel place with a big GAA and two rugby, massive rugby pitches behind it. Fantastic place to go to do training uh, courses and so on. I, I had a few host, hosted us there. And um, Dana Teagard and me were both doing the World Rugby Trainer course. She's uh, American from Germany. And uh, one of the projectors had a pro problem. We were in the background. So they said, right, Jules, Dana, go and get everybody active for five minutes while they fix the projector for the next presentation. So we got up there and Dana gets up and says, hi, everybody, everybody up on your feet. I don't know if you know, but Julian is one of the top Zumba instructors in the world. Off you go, Jules. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I'm going to remember that one for Dubai. When it could... Screwed me at that one. It was absolutely epic, epic. And I was still planning my revenge for that. And this was quite a few years ago. <sighs> Mate, I, I, next. I did, I did run a five-minute Zumba class for that one. So there you go. So you now have a well rehearsed, practiced, and coordinated Zumba routine. There was nothing practiced or coordinated about it. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was. There, there are some people who think quick on their feet, and she is definitely one of them. That, that's great. I absolutely love that. Well, um, look, I, we'll uh, we'll say goodnight tonight uh, with with those uh, little pranks. I'm sure we'll talk more more pranks when we when we get back from Dubai because there's usually plenty, um, and maybe some of the most infamous and notorious offences that come up in in court might just make their way onto the onto the show. No names, no names, obviously. Film tips. Oh, oh yeah, we're we're going to film them, uh, and you never know. We we could we could, and I think we should just get everybody sat round um, a, um, a phone, and we'll we'll do a live show, or at least try and record one while we're there as well. I will have my laptop with me, probably. So. Yeah, I, I, yeah, we'll we'll record on a laptop, and we'll just have a few phones going round, and we'll um, we'll get uh, get some footage from Dubai, we'll have a Dubai special. That'll be coming up later in uh, in December, we hope. Until then, well, and actually not until December, until next week, uh, it's time to say goodnight. But we'll see you again next week. Take care, bye-bye.